truth is speaking It's Gen Pop Lads, certified cash They don't know though Lads and Tola Hey yo, LAZ, make sure you check that store link in the descriptions and in the comment section. Now I mean to cop up one of them gem pop tees, hoodies, or accessories. Yer. Back then, but he was one of them, you know, kind of upper escalon dudes. And he was getting ready to bag me for the chain. You know what I'm saying? And all bark was sticking in the back. And somehow he must have seen the move, you know, because that's what made Off Off so powerful because of the whole Tomahawk Brownsville and everything. So, you know, he guard for real. And he seen the move getting ready to go down. And all I remember him saying, your mother better not touch no guards, you know? Mm. And, um, to the top, we products of hip hop from flipping cane in the spot to letting off gunshots. You need to stop. With that watered down hip hop. Ayo hey, LAZ, make sure you check that single and video from Chief Cherokee and Royal Flush. It's called Video Music Box. Check the description and the comment section for the Spotify link. When I tell you, when I saw cause, when I saw cause, um, those serious five niggas, they was better cause they were some live niggas cause they was live niggas. I seen these niggas. Going in niggas' pockets, fam. Had niggas lined up on the wall, fam. This was a true story, I swear. Fam, that not Flash wasn't there. It was Melly Mel and them niggas, cause that niggas lined up on their knee, robbing niggas, right? Well, I'm looking at these niggas while I'm walking past, jumping in the car, right? I'm a hip hop dude, fam. I'm a hip hop dude. I'm gonna bring it back from what how it happened, so what what it was. So it's like 1977, right? My pops leaves or whatever. And my mom takes me to this to the movies out the blue. Take me to the movies. And we go see this movie. And the movie was Saturday Night Fever. You ever see the movie? Definitely. So peep it. But you didn't see it when you were seven. Man, I'm seven, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> like we go we go into the sit and I'm watching this shit. And right and during the movie right then. I already knew right then I was gonna be a street dude. I knew it. I just knew it. That was about was fast. I was fascinated by the shit. Nigga, white boys hanging out at night, going to clubs, fighting, getting drunk, fucking with bitches. I was fascinated. Right? Okay, so 77 is sitting, and now the soundtrack of the Bee Gees, the, the, the sound is, is clicking all over the radio, and this and this. And this. So, right. So, 78 come around, right? And it's 78. And my mother. Is down at my cousin's house, and I hear my, I hear him say to my mother, Charlotte, there's a um black radio station in the city now, and it's called WBLS, and they play black shit, black, black shit, or whatever. So like, like, cause my pops, my pops was a black dude, but he was like the whitest black dude I knew. Like this nigga's music was all over the place, guys. Like, 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 I don't know. So like, but as soon as my pops left, we got the black, we got the black card. You feel me? With my mom's. So anyway, so. She goes down to Harlem, one twenty fifth, and she brings back this little JVC radio, and she plugs it up into the in her room on a nightstand, and this bitch plays night and day. It don't never go off. So now by that, you know when all the new tunes or the new songs that come on the radio, and I hear this fucking song, cause that forever changed my fucking life, man. Shout out to I think the dude is now Rogers, and the other dude is Bernard Davis. And I hear this song, cause, and to this day when I hear this song, I get chills. This shit changed my life forever. And the song was Good Times. You know what I mean? You talking about these are the yes, good yes. times? Yes, yes. Good I'm eight years old, and this shit is just coming out. And right then, if you ain't, if you, if you got some kind of ear and you know music, you like music, you know times are changing. I'm eight years old. 78, this record comes out. And I'm like, this motherfucking is something. So then, you know when, when it goes to the breaks, good times, and then the beats start playing. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, yeah. Good times. So now, yeah, and then they go into the break and they're playing. And something inside me is saying, nah, man, there's something more to this shit. It's missing something. It's missing something. But I'm eight years old. What the fuck I know? I'm just saying that. No, no. So now, and everybody knew that was my song. Oh, that's B song. That's B song, right? So now, after a while, when I start hearing it, 
I don't want to hear it now because every time that break comes, ain't like the sun is missing in the shit, right? So, a year ago by, I'm standing outside with my friends in front of my building on the porch, and my mother comes to the door. You know, mothers, they come to the door, and she says, does anybody you hear that song with Superman with, with wears pantyhose and ate some chicken that tastes like wood? Right? We looking at my mother like she's crazy. All right. What the fuck are you talking about? My friends are laughing. Uh, what the fuck are you talking about? And I'm like, Mom. And she goes, Oh my God, I, I, I get the fuck out of there. All right, come on, guys, let's go. Oh, all right, got away from that. Oh, my, 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 my. Like, a couple days later go by, we on the porch. She does it again. She was like, Hey, so you mean to tell me none of y'all heard Rapper's Delight? And I'm like, Rapper's Delight? That shit sound corny. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? I'm like, Come on, Mom, chill, Mom. Okay. So, like I say, the radio plays all day. For some reason, I'm missing this song. I'm missing it for some reason. So everybody, everybody's hearing this. My sister's hearing it, whatever. So I'm, for some reason, I'm missing it. You didn't hear that? I ain't that. So one day, I'm laying in my mother's bed, and then I just say the radio on. Remember, it go, W-B-L-S. So I listen to that shit. No doubt. Right, right. Then I, then I hear, boom, 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 and I'm like, what the fuck is this? Boom, 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 boom. And then it breaks into Babbitt's Delight. And my mother never told me that because they, they knew I like good times. But my mother would never told me it was to the good times be son. When I heard that shit, it blew my fucking mind, cousin. I'm like, that's what the fuck that shit was missing. I didn't know. I said, hey, ha, this, 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 I'm fucking wide open because I'm like, yo, what the fuck is this? All oh, right, right. Okay, this is 79. I'm nine years old. All right. And so everybody knows the song is a big shit, right? So then you start hearing more. Then I heard, like, Curtis Blow. The Curtis Blow shit. I'm like, wait a minute, huh? So then Curtis Blow, just Foonie G. Then now, now, now niggas in the projects and I'm walking around with radios. I'm starting to hear, like, the Treacherous 3. And shit, like, like, this shit is getting big, cuz. And I'm like, and I'm a fan of this motherfucker, right? Like, God damn, I don't want to do that shit. I don't want to do that, right? So it's like, it's like, like 80, I'm 11, I'm like 10 years old, you know, 8, well, I'm 11, and I hear on the radio, there's going to be a rap concert at Harlem and the Armory, you can look this up, because 2020, the, 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 the TV show 2020 was there to do an um, interview with rappers first coming out, and, and before before you unplay this story, look it up and you'll see it, 2020, and you see the dude doing an interview, where right? So they was there when the, when all this shit is going down. All right, so we get so I tell my I tell my mom, hey, your mom, there's a math concert. So so what all about? I'm, mind you, I'm ten years old, and she's like, well, I'm eleven, and she's like, I ain't got no time to be taking you no know, rap concert. Call your cousin and ask. I call my cousin that told my mother about the radio station. Your friend, what's up? You want to go to this rap concert? This nigga say that, son. This nigga like eighteen, nineteen. Now back in those days, eighteen, nineteen was old. Oh, man, oh, I want this to be 1819. Back. I'll take you. Back, right? It's me, my older sister, my cousin, his brother, and like two other people. He did come scoop us to my cousin in the Cordova, Burgundy Cordova. We flew him down 17 on the way to Harlem. And I don't know nothing about this nigga. I'm in the front seat. This nigga light up a joint. Oh, shit. This nigga pumping a joint. Well, I get contact. I'm saying I'm feeling nice, man. We riding, right? We riding. So. We get ready, we, we pull up to the army in Harlem, we pull up there, it's like 11 o'clock that night, cause I'm 11 years old. The first rap concert they're having, 11, I'm 11 years old. I go into this motherfucker, I go inside, and when I look around, it looks, it, to me, it looked like it was like an indoor tennis court or something. It was like this indoor city, there was no chairs or nothing, but it was kind of like an auditorium, and it was like, 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 you know, like it was weird looking from what I remember, right? So we get in there. And the standing room only, there's a baby about maybe like 200 people in this sit. And and this is the first time I see Mr. Magic. And he comes on stage with this white suit, with this red belt, you know, this top hat and a cane. You know, I'm Mr. Magic, and this is, we got 2020 here, and this is the first rap concert, and this and this and that. We got, they had Sequence, Sugar Hill, Furious Five, Treacherous Three, I think The Crash Crew, um, Funky Four plus one more. And you know the old, the, this one shit just coming out. It's fucking eighty one, right? So I go to the, I wander off to the bathroom, cause and 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 I see, and then I see oh, um, uh, the treacherous three in the bathroom arguing. No, 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 my mother they beefing in the bathroom. I'm looking over. So 
um, the LA Sunshine nigga spin around and he look at me. He was like, Yo, shorty man, what the fuck is you doing down here? What the fuck is you doing in here? But I look at the nigga, I run the fuck off, right? <laughs> okay, wow. So I go back into the crowd, right? It's, it's, it's standing room only, it's packed in there. Mr. Magic keep coming out, bullshit, prolonged shit. And I was like, an hour go by and nobody came on to perform yet. And Mr. Magic come out, a couple of little acts are coming out. And Mr. Magic is coming out. Now everybody came to see because they said Sugar Hill was gonna battle the Furious Five. Now everybody's coming to see that shit, right? And they're prolonging it, they're prolonging it. And there's this dude in the crowd. So when Mr. Magic's coming out talking, this nigga fed up, like he come out and, he, and Mr. Magic's talking and the dude is like, nah, man, flash this one time, nigga, flash this one time. He keeps saying that they want, he wants to see Magic the past. So, all right, like another half hour ago, go by, Mr. Magic keep coming out with his bullshit. So the dude is like, nah, man, fuck that. If you know so much magic, won't you disappear? He say that to Mr. Magic, right? Mr. Magic can't say it was the so the, the, so the nigga look at the nigga, right? Okay, you know, I right, right, right now, it's not to be on, right? So now, okay, so they do an act, somebody comes out, they start rapping, I think it was some, some Spanish niggas, the disco dream, you look it up, Mean Machine, they, used to, they rap to that, pull up to my bumper, baby. That was their first song, and it was the first Puerto Rican rapper. And he's rapping in Spanish shit. They was all right. They, they did their thing. But you looking up Disco Gene, the meme machine, right? So now the sequence, the funk you up, the sequence is ready to come out, right? So they come out, you know, and they get ready to do that. Um, remember, you know the sequence, Angie B and, and um, uh, uh, Show the Pearl and Blondie. Yeah, I think I know what you're saying. You remember? Know, see, this, see, this is like when I was like 980, so they take 80, so you probably just look like a little younger. So, but Angie B is the one, you know, is, you know, Angie is, is Angie Stone, the singer. Oh, she was Angie B at first? Yeah, she was Angie B in a rap group with um two other girls, Angie B, um, Shorter Pro, and Blondie. They came from North Carolina, and they was down with Sugar Hill Gang Records. Whatever, and they wrote a couple of the sugar. She wrote a couple of the Sugar Hill Gang songs. So but anyway, they come out, and now that they 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 really getting heavy, they they, they performing, they performing, and then right, you know, just getting live in there. And all of a sudden, cause I feel like it felt like it felt like I got hit by a fucking train, baby. Like they were like it was a stampede, bang! I get toppled over, and I'm I'm under. I'm under like 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 20 fucking people because I can't move, it's dark, and I feel like the, the lungs of my, the, the air is getting pushed out of my lungs like I'm suffocating, and these people ain't getting up off me, and everybody, you can hear all kinds of chaos and all, and I'm trying to get up, and I'm stuck under these fucking people that fell under me, right, and, and I'm under there for a minute, and now I'm starting to panic, like, oh shit, I can't breathe, I can't breathe, so I'm trying to fight, I'm trying to fight, so I end up pulling myself up out of that shit like get up out of that shit and there's chaos and now you hear like you hear like a gun go off and this is all facts because like, this is the truth you hear like a gun go off right so now I'm looking for my peoples now the people that I came out I'm only fucking 11 years old and I'm looking and I'm scrambling around and you see like wigs on the floor shoes pocketbooks niggas is running out of their shit whatever scared or it's chaos in this shit so I finally find my cousins and my sisters and them shit right so we're trying to make our way out the door and everything is going off or whatever. And people are still wild. So we, we're starting to, we're trying to, we run out the door. When I run out the door, I see this dude sitting on top of a, um, the hood of somebody's car with his kneecaps twisted backwards, like fucked up, like he got trampled on. This nigga fucked up, right? Then you got people out there trying to sell shit that they, they just boosted from in there, like records and shit and shirts and shit. You want to buy this from chaos in the street? So we park, we park down the street a little bit. So as we're walking, I don't know if I should say this, but I'm gonna uh, like, like, like. So as we're walking, cuz, when I tell you, what I saw, cuz, what I saw, cuz, um, those serious five niggas, they was about it, cuz, they were some live niggas, cuz, they was live niggas. I seen these niggas go in the niggas' pockets, man. Had niggas lined up on the wall, man. This is a true story, I swear. Damn that not Flash wasn't there. It was Melly Mel and them niggas, cause that niggas lined up on their knee robbing niggas, right? Well I'm looking at these niggas while I'm walking past and jumping in the car, right? While everybody's out there running up these niggas is running down on people, bombing shit, these niggas are robbing niggas with it. So 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 at that at, at, at that point, you know, 
we jump in the car and we peel the fuck off. But 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 like I'm saying, like so when I when I bring it back to like when I tell you how much of a fan I was to the hip hop shit that I went down to a concert, my first concert at eleven, the first concert that they threw in Harlem at the Armory, and I got stampeded and almost died in that motherfucker. Right? And 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 from from the day on from there, but after like I told you, like with that with that good times and that and that rappers the light thing, I knew like I had I had I had that I had that shit in me. So one day after I, I this is after the concert or whatever, and I'm gonna put this traumatized the concert. The 2020 thing showed up, but they didn't show after actually what everything that happened or whatever. So so the one day I wake up and I go outside and there's nobody outside, so I start walking towards the park to go swimming. So while, while as I'm walking towards the park, I look under the pavilion, I see under the pavilion, and I hear good times playing, right? And I see a whole bunch of people crowding around, crowding around. So I'm like, oh man, what the fuck is this? Let me go with it. Let me go. So I push my way through, cause and this is the first time I see a motherfucker on the ones and twos cutting up good times of my nigga. That shit right there made my dick hard. Cause I knew right then, yo, I'm gonna do that shit right there. I'm gonna do that shit. So, you ever see that episode where everybody hates Chris when he was the DJ? I probably did, but I don't. I don't remember it. So, so now my mom's now my mom's now know that I'm into this shit, right? So she's buying me rap records and rap records. Now I got a little record player. My mom's got a record player, so now I think I'm a DJ. So. I'm carrying these record players around and I'm doing little house parties in the projects. I ain't Yo, got my no bro, mixer. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I have to ask you, what do you mean when you said you, it was Melly Mel and them niggas robbing niggas? Dude, when, 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 when the, when the shit jumped off, when the stampede, something happened to where the whole crowd, the, everybody, like I told you, was standing room only. The whole crowd, fell down and it was chaos violent. As I look when I looked up, when I looked up to go run is the problem when I broke out from the people, I see the Furious Five on stage and they're watching all this chaos jump off, whatever. So when so when we're still stuck, I gotta find my peoples. So when I find my peoples, we're running out the door because it's still wild. We run out the door and we're parked down the street. These niggas must have went out some back entrance or something. So as we're walking towards the car to get in the car, I look from the corner of my eye and I see Melly Mel, uh, Cowboy, Bahir, and I didn't see Flash, and I see me had niggas on their knees, facing the wall, robbing them. With hammers out? Look, I, but they have the hammers out? I can't, I don't really remember. They must have, I don't really remember. I don't remember. All I knew was that I seen this nigga Melly Mel barking by my and they had like four niggas down against the wall on knees facing the wall and shit and them niggas were surrounded by going through their pockets. I'm like, oh shit. Uh-huh. And I'm like, damn yeah, man, these niggas, yo, and, 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 and Melly Mel was my man, man, when we dropped that message, I think... I think that was like the best rap song ever made to me. Nah, it was. One of that, the best. That's the song made. that changed my life. When I heard Yo, that no. shit, I was mesmerized. Dude. I was mesmerized. I like... That <laughs> That shit had me mesmerized, my nigga. Yo. Yo. And they said that they wasn't going to uh, um, use the beat. They wasn't going to do it. And somebody talked them into it. Because the song... The song is timeless, B. It's like, like, That like, shit, everything man. they said on that shit is still going on today. Straight up and down. Man, when he, when, when, when he was like, when he was like, um, um, my son said, Daddy, I don't want to go to school because the teacher's jerk. He was thinking of a fool. fool. Oh, oh, the kids smoke weed, but they could be cheap. But just got a time, we're going to be a street sweeper. And then, and then when he said, a child is born with no state of mind, blind to the ways of mankind. God smiling on you, but he's frowning so. Because only God knows what you'll go through. When he said, turn stick up, kid, but look what you done did. God set up for an eight year bid. Now your man in his foot and you're a main tag. Ooh. I'm like, damn, that could have been any one of niggas. Like, damn, I was like, 
But yeah, man, like. But yeah, you I said you was this. you said you was carrying. You started carrying crates and doing DJ shit. Your mom's this, got you to. So no, my mom's no, my mom's my mom's my mom's like she had like a regular record player and I had a record player and it wasn't no turntable ever, but I would <laughs> carry them over and do these parties and I would use headphones as my mixer or whatever, or whatever. So so remember the um Stethosonic. Close that's uh well the the that song. Like the dude that made the beat, the the my plans at DDC. I was there with true facts. I was there when they be calling that go that uh go that the piss paw scratched on my turntables. So deep it. So I used to go over there and we had like a little group and we used to try to get in there and, and, and my man used to make beats for us, but he pushed us to the back burner and thought these bitches came through and they was better than us and thought, you know, he played us or whatever, whatever. But anyway, I got my first pair of turntables off this dude. He sold me a turn a mixer and two turntables. I was fifteen. And 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 I got these motherfuckers and cousin and and, and there wasn't no turning back. I'm nasty on the one or twos, and I'm mean on that mic too. Like I'm saying, like this hip hop thing, this culture, I, 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 I like it, it runs deep in me, cause it runs deep in me. And like when I say like the, the 50 years, the 50 years of hip hop, I'm the same man. I was there, I was there. I mean, like I was there, be like, and 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 like word. I was 11 at that concert, almost got killed cause of rap. <laughs> well, what you said started the stampede in the first place. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't know. All of a sudden, it just felt like a freight, and I'm standing in the middle because it was like 200 people standing room only, and it just feels like a freight train hit me, and I just got knocked up all over, and I was piled, a whole bunch of people piled on me, and I was trapped under that motherfucker getting crushed, and I couldn't move. Baby. And then when I got up, when I finally got up, damn there, you know what I mean, damn there, passing the fuck out. When I broke free and I got up and I found my sister, to my sister, my older sister, well, I was 11, we'll see like 12. And I found my sister and my cousins and all that. And when we all got together, another one jumped off and like, the place was like so small that there was mad chaos going on. So you had to run the fuck up out of that motherfucker. I don't know how this shit started. And you said you did hear some gunshots though, right? And then, and then I heard, and then yeah, when I broke free, I heard some gunshots. And then when I'm, when I'm, when I break free and so much chaos and like it's, it's a little dark in there and when I'm running around I see wigs on the floor pocketbooks high heels I even see the I see the gun on the floor <laughs> yo fam it was chaos in that bitch and, and, and that shit kind of like fucked me up for a little bit so I didn't like to be around people and then and then we used to have this 7.30 this train that come by the project 7.30 express and then it would run by the project when I sit going by it sounds like that fucking stampede. I used to get shook. Oh, shit. I'm gonna turn around like, yeah, that shit fucked me up for a minute. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, that shit crazy, though, man. Them, them concerts is dangerous. Yo, and that's the like, night. Yeah, so, yeah, yo, and, and this, like, so, 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 this is funny. So, I've been, yo, from there, because I don't bump at the concert. Like, like I say, I don't be around a lot of people. So my wife was like, yo, um, you wanna um go to this concert? What concert? And my wife was that dumb shit. Um, what was that, what was that white chick name we went to oh man? Um, um What the fuck was we went mad? This said we went mad. We go and and, and and she said, You wanna go to that concert? And thinking in my head, shit, I ain't gonna fuck down that car. I ain't fucking with no concert. But in all in all, fam, on everything I love, I just booked Tickets for the um, New York State of Mind coming down here. I live in Florida now. I, I lived down here for like 20 years. I moved down here from New York in 01, and I've been down there for like 20 years. But they coming down to uh, uh, Fort Lauderdale next week. So I did get some tickets for the Wu Tang Nine shit. Other than that, but I really don't do shit like that. But I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do it for the culture and, and, and see what it is. I gotta, I gotta do something. Like, you know what I mean? So. That's that in a nutshell. So, well, like I say, man, like I really fucked with this, 
with the, with the culture, man. And, and I see the change and and how it is now. And, and a lot of a lot of these young boys piss me off because it's the fact that I seen a couple of interviews like little Uzi Vert and a couple of niggas like if you put on that old freestyle that rap shit, I'm not rapping to that shit. And then they're like like disrespecting the old dudes. And if it wasn't for the old dudes, these niggas wouldn't be there because right now, fam, I guarantee you, if you ask one of these niggas who cool D is or Spoonie G is, these niggas ain't gonna know. Hip hop fell from grace, man. It fell from grace totally, bro. You know, you got those that's out there like myself that's true to this shit forever, but we are very, very few. But I mean, I mean, people that still making, trying to make music. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, this shit is dying out at an alarming rate. We see, a, we seen a, a beautiful thing for the 50th anniversary, but. I'm talking about artists that are currently putting out music on the radio. It is very few of those people that are true hip hop, uh, you know, true, true to the hip hop game, man. Very few. And 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 do this shit like I say, like like man, this like like I thought you like like back in the day, man. You, you hear old, old old school cats talk about shows again. 250 a show. These motherfuckers now get like 80 grand a show, and like, and then and, 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 and that, that six night cat even said it. He was like, "Listen, I'm gonna tell you right now, the game is rigged because there's plenty of people out there way better than me, but it's it's just how they picking it. It's 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 it's, it's the cuz that run the shit, and, and they want to hear that violent and that dumb shit that make us look like buffoons again and it's gonna take like niggas like you and I and other, and other people like to bring that shit back yeah bro you know reality is man you know hip hop is like a living entity in itself so it's like it, it may need to go through stages of you know filth right now it's going through a stage of filth there's a few people in the game that's still trying to make good music but Right now, this shit is at the lowest it ever been with as far as IQ. The hip hop IQ right now is at the lowest it's ever been. We saw it at the highest. Where it was where it was it was you was that nigga if you was able to get deep and still spit some shit that sound hot, fly, and street. You understand what I'm no. saying? Yo, remember, remember, remember when a shit came out like a banger and you be like, oh shit, like that shit ain't happened in a long time for me. Like, 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 like I remember the first time I made playing Flavor in the Ear for me. I was like, what the fuck? I had that nigga play that shit like five times. I didn't like, yo, B, I gotta go now, but I gotta go. But I was like, it like, like that, that touch you, like, damn, that shit is fly. That's a fact. When I first heard that beat, that shit sounded like that shit came from another planet. <laughs> you know, that, that was, it was a perfect fucking untitled play in the air. It, it, it was like, God put it there. Uh, and, that was and, like and the firm. funny thing about it, the funny thing about it to me is like the only person that sounded good to it was Greg back, and he wasn't really saying that. Now niggas went crazy on that remix too, but it was it was that beat at the time nobody had ever heard a beat like that. That was the, that, was that the, shit was the first of its kind. Nobody had a beat that sounded so sonically crazy. Everybody, everybody wanted to spit to that shit. That shit was different, be like, like, yo, like, like, damn, I was like, yo, what the fuck? But like I say, I haven't heard a good anthem in years, like, nothing touched me, and then you hear this stuff, and like, it's like, damn, man, like, 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 what, are you serious? I, I, I guess, you know, but they say it's a young kid's game, but it ain't really, it's like, like, I, it's hard to explain, because to me, Sometimes, like, when I hear shit, and, and, and to me, what it, like, like, would it get me small, if I listen to somebody and they say something stupid, like, 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 uh, I'm, I'm this, I'm that, I'll do this, like, 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 you know what I mean? Like, to me, I take it, like, as a challenge, like, like, and it, and it depends, like, you know what I mean? Like, uh, like, like, don't, yo, don't, don't like say this, that. bro, I love, I love, when you get older, 
you're gonna start appreciating music that means something more. When you young, you sometimes you're gonna wanna feed off the raw energy because you know we was listening to our throw your guns in the air and Back. motherfucking tonight's the night, red man, like this shit was gangster shit. You feel what I'm saying? Wild killer shit we was listening to. NWA, we was listening to some toxic shit too. You feel what I'm saying? But um, as you get older, you start saying, all right, I can't be just feeding my brain with this senseless shit all the time. Like, you feel me? My shit gotta have some meaning to it. And that's when shit started, e- like you, you would evolve with your hip hop. This is why niggas love Pac so much because Pac, let niggas listen to some wild shit, but he educating you at the same time and getting deep at the same time. And he he was the equilibrium of that shit. That's why niggas loved him. But that song that J. Cole got out with um with um Lil Dirk, I like that shit. And that's straight new age hip hop. Lil Dirk is a new age ass rapper. J. Cole been in the game for a little while now, but that song right there, that all my life, yeah, all my yeah, life, yeah, yeah, that yeah. shit is a blazer. That yeah, shit is I a blazer. That was, that, I heard that the other night in Miami. I was in Miami the other night. I heard that shit. They yeah, because they, they saying something. They saying something on the song. You feel what I'm saying? That shit is hard. That's, that's what that's I like how to hear. You, That's hip hop. That's hip hop right there. That's not motherfucking drill. That's not mumble rap. That's not motherfucking uh I I I I, I, I wanna see where your skills at, B. I don't wanna hear about you know this and this and this all the time. Like, like, yo, nigga, let's get it, nigga. Me and you right now. Let's go. Like, they, 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 they type shit. That's the type of shit I'm on. Like, you know what I mean? And 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 like 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 and and and, 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 and like because now people you ever you heard you ever hear that black thought freestyle or from Master Black to the burn beat? I'm sure I heard it. No, no, no. Let me no, matter of fact, let me ask you this: What is the definition of a freestyle? Now, this is a this is it's it's, it's a comp, that's a complicated question because there were there was a point in time where a freestyle was just literally what you made off the top of your head without nothing being written or practiced Back. or anything like that. But then, when mixtapes and mix shows became a thing. A freestyle meant literally it's free to do whatever style you want to. If you want to spit a written verse, you could spit a written verse. If you want to come off the top of the head, you can come off the top of the head. But it's free. It's whatever freestyle you want. And you're free to use whatever style you want. So later on, the shit evolved. When hip hop evolved, the shit evolved to... If I'm if a DJ saying yo, I need an exclusive freestyle from you, he not saying I want you to go in in the booth and, and and make sure you don't write nothing down and spit off the top of your head. A DJ gonna want some shit that makes sense on his mixtape. You feel what I'm saying? He ain't gonna want you saying little shit that other niggas said and shit you said five times. You feel me? Like, yeah. See now you just over my eyes, but now 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 I understand it. I understand. Who they saying that? Well, I think they should call it something different or go off the top. But well, I look like freestyle free because when you hear rap, to me, when you hear rap or freestyle, it's this shit that didn't make the album or something. They, 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 like, I, I don't like when, when when people call a freestyle and they spit red. That bothers me. Yeah, some people. Like that. That's like that's why that shit is really literally supposed to be called off the top of the head. You understand what I'm saying? Pause. Right. Like you feel what I'm saying? If you cut, if you saying yo, this is off the top. Now I'm gonna keep it real. I rapped all my life, bro. But my freestyle game is suspect. I can't. I mean, I don't have confidence in my freestyle. It's how your brain functions. Some Mm. niggas' brain function. where I know niggas like my nigga J.U. Ice. Shout out to J.U. Ice, Harlem, Dykeman. You heard? My nigga J.U. Ice is the type of rapper, bro. I promise you. That nigga gets on every song. You could listen, you could type in St. Labs and J.U. Ice. We got a bunch of songs together. Everything that nigga damn near ever recorded with me, that fucking verse was off the top of the wig. He went in the booth and the and he just spit a verse. He just got that type of brain that function that way. And you would never ever know that that shit is freestyle, bro. 
You would Same never that. know he he came off the top of the wig with that shit, bro. Straight up. See, see that's like like you were saying, like to me, my pen game is suspect. I can't write rounds because I think too fast. But like I say, I'm gonna slip off the top of the head and be deadly and then remember it. And that's how I do that's how I do my thing. Like like I can't write the shit, B. I, I tried it. I can't do it. And, and I feel awkward. I, I I just can't do it. Yeah, I'm a I'm a I'm a songwriter, man. So like I could write any type of song to any type of beat. I could go into a different personality. I could do it when it comes to writing. But if somebody throw a beat on and be like, yo, last kick a freestyle, I'm not doing it, bro. I'ma let a nigga know. I'ma spit some written shit, my nigga. I'ma spit some written shit. Cause I ain't trying to look like a clown. I look as when I first heard rappers are like, I'm thinking that these niggas are just Rapping. I don't know nothing about writing shit. So that's how I'm thinking they're doing it. So that's how I started yeah, doing it. Grandmaster Cass, if I'm not mistaken, Grandmaster Cass is the one who wrote that song for them or majority of that song, Rapper's Delight, if I'm not mistaken. That's a fact. Yep, yep. Grandmaster Cass. Grandmaster Cass is that, and that dude. And that shit came out years later, if if I'm not mistaken, from when it was supposed to come out. Yep, the video, yep. The video came out years later. Or some shit like that. When that shit was already old news. And that nigga quoted it too because he did say, I the C A S A, the O E A, and the rest of that Bell Wire, that Casanova Fly, that Big Bang Hey. I was pissed off when I found out about that shit, man. I don't need it. Yeah, but that shit was straight. Even back then, niggas knew that, though. Literally, like, a lot of rappers, if you if you check the channel, I don't know if you check the channel, but shout out to the bro. Cosmo D, that song um, jam on it. Matter of fact, the first song that they put out, they put out a song called Jam On's Revenge. That song, Jam On's Revenge, was really uh, kind of a diss song dissing um, Sugar Hill Gang. A word? Yeah. They was making fun of Sugar Hill Gang. That's why they was doing that. Sonny even said that voice, he was doing that. And the rest is FL. You know how the niggas was rapping like that. They was rapping like that on the track too. Like basically mocking them niggas. And they did that on the underground. And label heads heard that shit and was like, yo, that shit is fire. Like, I wanna take that stu- I wanna take that back in the studio and, and spice that up. And then that's when they came out with jam on it. You feel me? But really, they was going at them niggas' heads because a lot of niggas wasn't feeling them because they felt like they was commercializing hip hop. You feel what I'm saying? But yeah, I didn't, I didn't know that for years later that because yeah, they they said a lot of niggas and and Belly Belly in the interview with Belly Belly was like that's the wackest song ever made. <laughs> <laughs> but now that shit was a blazer though. It was a blazer. It's just that it was a it was bits and pieces of a lot of other shit put together and then put on a platter for niggas to see. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, but just, I mean, and it was slob because you didn't know the, you didn't know the background of it until you found out. Yeah, like still, saying, but like, this shit still go hard. Nigga can't front. When that shit come on and then that other shit they got is even crazier. The Apache? That Apache shit is bonanzas. You don't, you don't. I DJ because you throw that on at any wedding or Nigga, any, that any, shit. Any Bro, that sh- that like shit was in the sp- that shit was in the SpongeBob movie, and that shit had shit jumping. <laughs> that shit, come on, Kibasabe, jump on it, jump on it. That shit goes. That shit, Hell that yeah. shit shits on uh rappers' delight, bro. That's a fact. Cause I, I, like I say, I'm a DJ. You throw that on at a better reception or a party, they gonna lose it. I don't care what race, color, or creed it is. When that shit come on, burn, 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 burn. Kimasabe, jump on it. That shit's stupid. That's a fact. That when the Fresh Prince did that shit, and they did that, and then that, just, uh, the episode that one time, him and, him and Carlton danced to that shit. And then that shit, well, yeah, they made, yeah, that was official. That was official. They had a couple of choice. I remember, I was, I was 10 years old, cousin, I'm driving to Virginia with my cousin and we stop at this ah, some fucking hate town and I look in the window and I see a Rapper's Delight a Sugar Hill Gang album and this is just when Rapper's Delight was out I was like oh shit 
man. I ran back to my cousin, man, and begged this nigga for $10. This nigga like, all right, come on, nigga, come on. And the nigga did. That was the first album my cousin bought me, that Sugar Hill Gang album. And they had a couple of songs on that. And then, and then, they, then, then they threw me off because they had that nigga Wonder Mike, like, singing and shit. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Like, yeah, that was, like, the first shit I got. Like, like I said, like, if it wasn't for that Sugar Hill Gang, man, like, 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 I'm telling you, man, like, like that in that good times and and, that, and that's it. It was phenomenal, man. And like it changed my life, man. That's a fact and to this day. If I hear that good times, man, and I, I remember, I remember, I see niggas at the park jam and the, the, the DJs going back and forth with the good times, and I'm seeing these dudes rap and shit. Cause that's it used to blow my fucking mind, man. Like damn, like, like man, Bro, y'all listen. I be, I be driving around, man. I be driving around. I won't be. I got an '80s playlist, and I just sometimes, you know, I got. Sometimes I'm listening to '90s. Sometimes I'm listening to '80s. Sometimes I'm listening to early twos. But real talk, bro, my '80s playlist. That shit got hip hop on it, all type of different shit on it. Like I got shit like, oh my god, I got shit like it's a cruel, cruel summer. Who Leaving that? me here on my own is a crew. Who sing that shit again? Um. Uh, who fucking sings that shit? Yo, if you're an artist, brand, or business, get at me for that organic promo. You heard my Instagram reached 5.2 million accounts in the last 28 days. My YouTube, I run these YouTube streets. Might have been like maybe five or six, six of us that came up with the concept. And then, you know, it just evolved from that point on. Did the show, the A-Team, have that influence on y'all wanting that name, though? Vehicle. Make sure you pull up on my bros in Brooklyn In East New York 225 Montauk You heard? Brooklyn Splash This is a father and son Black owned business Car wash that's popping in BK Make sure you pull up Tell them LAZ Z-Man Suicide Polo with the Ski Man Sent you, you heard? Once again, that's 225 Montauk Between Pickin' and Belmont and in this paragraph with a death wish My name is Royal Flush, pardon my exit Woo! Play the table, get your card stretched Just the Henny Black, Chief of Royal Flush on the track we LAZ, make sure you follow Austin Block Records LLC on all platforms You heard Facebook, YouTube, Instagram